and welcome to Plant Fit Meg. Today I thought I would do a frequently asked questions video about my weight loss specifically because I've had a lot of questions about what I've done to lose the weight, how I got started, how things are going now, and all that kind of stuff. So I just thought I could go through it and make a video about it. So to make a long story short, I went plant-based nearly five years ago. I decided to go plant-based for my health and I also decided to go vegan overnight. So I made the decision to do it overnight and that's how I got started. I actually started with a five-day juice fast and then uh, switched to a plant-based diet from there. And I started really simply with just foods that I was familiar with, foods that were already plant-based that I was already eating, like uh, fruit and smoothies and oats and cereal, breads, things like that, um, and just expanded from there. I also started with very simple recipes that I could put together very easily and that were very simple, uh, like chili and pasta with marinara sauce and things like that. I would just omit the animal product from it. I'll link some recipes below of things that I enjoyed when I first started my journey. I have lost a total of 80 pounds. So it did take me some time to come around to eating a fully whole food, plant-based, oil-free diet. Uh, so in the first year of going plant-based, I lost 60 pounds. Subsequently, I loosened the reins a little bit. I started eating more processed foods and uh, just incorporating you know, more meals out and things like that into my diet. And my health declined my uh, weight also went back up a little bit. I gained about 20 pounds back. And then in the last year or so, maybe 18 months, um, I have fully regained my health and lost 40 pounds. So the 80 pounds was lost, you know, starting in 2016 and continuing through until 2020, but it wasn't a linear, progression of continuously losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. It was, you know, I lost a big chunk. I lost 60 pounds in a year, maintained it, gained 20 pounds back over a couple years, and then lost 40 pounds in the last 18 months. If you'd like to see more info about uh, my weight loss specifically, you can check out the video that I made with my husband where we discuss how we as a couple have lost over 100 pounds. I'll link it below. Yes and no. So I don't plan every single meal in advance. I don't plan, you know, a week out or something like that. I also don't individually portion my foods into prepared containers. What I do is I make big batches of roasted potatoes or mashed potatoes or a uh, whole grain like rice or quinoa um, or beans. I'll have beans on hand and I'll have those things prepped and ready to go in my fridge. I also really love leftovers, so I do tend to have leftover something or other in my fridge, whether it's chili or soup or just anything that I, whenever I make a meal, I make enough so that there's going to be leftover uh, for the following day or the following couple of days. I also like to chop veggies in advance sometimes and I keep shredded zucchini and shredded carrot in my fridge so that it's easy to just top my oatmeal with in the mornings or just add to a salad, just throw into pretty much anything. So I've been asked this question a lot. I consume a whole food plant-based oil-free diet. So what that means is I eat vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and spices. Um, and so I don't specifically follow a plan 
That being said, I have done a lot of reading and obviously that reading has influenced my decisions on how I eat and what I eat. Also my personal preferences and personal tastes have influenced that as well. So I basically made created my own sort of way of doing things and what works for me. I think when I first went plant-based, I was following more of a starch solution style diet. Um, I, I didn't specifically follow the plan as set out by Dr. McDougall, but I think just from my taste preferences of I love potatoes, I love whole grains, I enjoy starchy foods, so I think I leaned more in that direction just kind of naturally. I also read How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger very early on when I made the transition into a plant-based diet and I did try to vaguely cover the daily dozen but I definitely did not eat the recommended amount of greens or beans in the beginning. I've also read Eat to Live by Dr. Furman. I eat way more starchy vegetables and whole grains than Dr. Furman recommends in Eat to Live. If I had to qualify what my dietary pattern is now, I would say it is mostly, I guess, a cross between the starch solution and uh, Dr. McDougall's maximum weight loss program. So I don't eat as much starch as is recommended in the starch solution. I believe it's 70% of your plate uh, is supposed to be starch and I don't eat that much starch. But I also don't subscribe to everything that is in the maximum weight loss plan either. So I eat a 50-50 plate for the most part. So I eat half of my plate as green vegetables. And then the other half, Dr. McDougall would recommend the other half be starch. And for me, uh, sometimes it's starch, sometimes it's a mix of starch with other things like tofu, tempeh, which aren't recommended on the maximum weight loss program. I also don't limit my fruit intake. I also consume ground flax or chia seeds every day for omega-3s. Avocado, nuts, and dried fruit aren't part of my daily diet, but I definitely do consume those uh, food items as well. And now I would say I generally do meet Dr. Greger's uh, recommendations for the daily dozen. The only exception being nuts. I don't tend to eat nuts every single day. I like to keep my meals fairly simple. So I do like to switch it up, but I most often will eat oats in the morning with uh, some kind of vegetable. So whether the vegetable is on the side and I eat the veggie first and then I eat my bowl of oats with fruit or I mix the vegetables into my oats. So I'll add a uh, shredded carrot or shredded zucchini or both. I have a couple of baked oats recipes that I've been really, really enjoying. Uh, so I'll leave those linked below in case you're interested. As I previously said, I often eat a 50-50 plate. So half of my plate is green vegetables and the other half is whatever other foods I wanna eat. The other foods could be chili or soup. It could be rice and beans. It could look like tofu scramble with roasted potato fries. So lots of different options, but still keeping it fairly simple. I drink a lot of water and I usually eat fruit or sweet potatoes for a snack if I'm hungry in between meals or after dinner. I have a bunch of recipes on my website and I use them all the time. So you can check those out below to get an idea of what I eat in a day. I also do have a what I eat in a day video that you can check out. I will link that below and there's actually another what I eat in a day video coming next week. So keep an eye out for that. No, no I don't. I don't count calories and I do not count macros. In the beginning, I tried to track a little bit with chronometer just to see what I was eating and what kind of targets I was hitting, uh, but I, I didn't enjoy doing it. I found it to be quite cumbersome and a lot of the plant-based doctors say that it's not really 
necessary to track calories or macros when you're eating a whole food plant-based diet anyway. Uh, so I, I didn't really st stick with it. I've lost 80 pounds and regained my health on a plant, whole food plant-based diet without doing any of that kind of tracking. That being said, I think that for some people, um, tracking calories can be very helpful and can give them good insight into where their starting point is and where they're going. And depending on what dietary pattern they choose, it might be helpful to track your calories or macros for a time just to kind of see where you're at. I would either get really obsessive and really wrapped up in it and be on the phone constantly trying to figure out like how much of this and how much of that and well you know measuring everything out you know it was a lot um or i would just do the other end of the spectrum where i kind of like guesstimate things so it wasn't accurate anyway um so it just didn't work for me i think in certain instances it can be really helpful for people but if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and your goal is to lose a significant amount of weight or regain health i don't think it's necessary to track calories that being said, if you enjoy doing it or you find it to be a useful tool, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Yes. In the beginning, I didn't exercise much at all. I was trying to get the food right and focus on that first. And so that was my main focus. I did try to walk and get more steps in but otherwise I didn't really exercise that much in the beginning. About four months in, I think I decided that I wanted to take up running, which I had never really done before and was really scary for me. I was still quite overweight, probably still in the obese category at that point. And um, yeah, I was nervous about it, but I was really excited and I had energy. Uh, so I did take up running fairly early on, within, you know, after about four months, I think. I joined a learn to run group with my best friend and we had a lot of fun with that, you know, just doing the, you know, one minute walk, one minute run and just building up and eventually running a 5K and be, being really excited about that. I currently go to the gym three days a week. So I lift weights in a group fitness class two days a week, and I also do a, another class one day a week that's sort of a yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi combo. Um, so that's what I do at the gym. And then at home, I also like to play with my calisthenics bars. Um, I don't have a specific schedule for that. Like some weeks I'll work on it, you know, one or two days a week, some weeks not at all. It just kind of depends on what's going on and what's happening in my life. I try to stay active by walking when possible rather than driving the car. I play with my five-year-old son that keeps me active and busy and I also practice yoga. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and or leave me a comment below. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below and I can definitely answer those for you. I'd be happy to answer more questions and I can even make another frequently asked questions video if there are enough questions coming through. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe below and I will talk to you soon. Bye.